Hello everyone, I'm Rafa from Big Moxie Games and welcome to our second Warden's Rising Dev Diary. If you're new to Warden's Rising, check out our first Dev Diary where we made a complete overview with all the basics you need to understand our game. For this video, we'll cover the build mode and its variability since it's an important part of the gameplay and our first step to defeat the massive enemy invasion. The first thing you see when you first spawn into a map is the build mode. This phase is where you plan your strategies around your synthesis core, thinking about how to best utilize the resources you have and the terrain you're in. You can see from which path the invasion is coming in your minimap, highlighted in a red line. Usually, in the last phase of each map, the invasion comes from all the paths available. The build mode has unlimited time, so you can really go through the whole map to see where you should build your defenses. Look for the best high grounds, choke points and narrow paths to plan your strategy and decide which tower to place in each spot. At the start of the game, you'll have limited resources, so think carefully about what you build. For each structure, you'll spend a specific amount of synthesis, a resource you get after defeating each wave. Maybe starting with the machine gun, a fast and long range structure is a good start, adding some walls to block the enemy's way. As you progress through the game, you'll have access to new structures and more resources, allowing you to create more complex structures and builds, giving you more space to create the kind of defense you want. There are over 13 defense structures in the whole game. Each structure will provide different benefits and strategies. The flamethrower, for example, is a great damage-dealing weapon, but it might need some crowd control to guarantee it will burn the enemies for long enough. The post tower has a chance to stun the enemies, so the more you place, the easier it will be to stun your enemies. But on the other hand, it costs more synthesis than most of the other towers, making it difficult to use just post towers in your layout. Mastering every defense structure requires time and testing, so use the maps you've already finished to test crazy builds and find your favorite ones. Speaking of maps, every map has different paths and environmental hazards, so study them well in the build phase to analyze where to place your defenses. Choke points can be of great use, and blocking them with some walls and placing some slow-paced but high damage structures is my personal favorite way to go. Using high grounds is also something you can do, since some structures like the homing missiles benefit from shooting from afar. If you're an ultra-strategic player, you can even place the towers in a way to let you just climb up a building and shoot the hordes of enemies from a safe distance, as your towers do the nasty work. In build mode, you can also spend synthesis to upgrade your structures, making them more powerful and with more range. For that, you'll have to balance the number of structures you want to place with the power you'll need them to have for each invasion. That's what you need to understand about the basics of Warden's Rising build mode. Every player can build however they want in the grid area of each map, so we can't wait to see your crazy builds and how they work on the battlefield. After the build mode, the combat starts, but we'll talk about that in the next video. That's it! If you like this video, wishlist the game on Steam and join our Discord community where we talk every day about the game. Follow us on our social media and of course, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. It's time to rise up!